So, here we are, day two of my skyblocking. And we ended last time with cooking some fish in the frying pan. And I have a fishing rod. And at some point I will set up an automated fisher. And I will probably adjust these. Oh, hello, light wave. You're you looking all notice. decked out. You didn't even notice I was standing behind you with a knife. <laughs> no, I didn't notice that you were standing behind me with a knife. <laughs> Not until you got walked into my face. Meow. So is this a present? A warp book with two of 54 pages. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of want to show off my island a bit. Oh, well, that sounds like a plan. So I, I take it I right-click on it. Okay, and warp to waypoint, light wave. Let's see. Okay. And so I wait for it to load, and I've got this. Oh. All right. So I walk to the edge, and I take a look. All right, so we've got this nice big runway. Oh. Runway? That's a bridge. Okay, we've got this nice big bridge. And... It goes back to the hub. It goes back to the hub. Okay. So you built your bridge to the hub at a Y of 64. Oh, I didn't even pay attention to the Y. Why not? <laughs> what do you expect me to say? <laughs> <laughs> So you've got your giant multi-layer farm over here. Yeah. Is this thing really going to be complaining about the... <sighs> All right. Who's so, complaining about what? Oh, I've got a problem with a uh, temperature sensor on my computer complaining about the... Now, I want to point out... Oh, this is just... What? If this keeps going on, I'm just going to... Turn that thing off. I want to point out to the viewers at home just how sensible and logical your island is compared to my island. In fact, if oh. I did not know better, I right, modified I'm just it. going to close that temperature monitor thing down because it's just taking too much of prompt. But I added those slabs there. I understand. But the point is, your island looks just like the single player island. You've got this uh, nice little 2x2 two two over here going down a hole. And you can walk out the hole. And even if you get into the water stream, you can just walk right out of the water stream. Oops, that worked in the single player world. Alright, so I walk out over here. There we go. So yeah, it's all nice and straightforward. It's a huge improvement over my island. Have you seen my island? Nope. It, what? Oh, yeah, I have. I just haven't looked at it extensively. Take a look. You like will I find it to be did. horrid. Now. You've got a nice little walkway over here. Uh, don't open those doors at night. Sorry, I was actually trying to eat. All right. So that's your mob spawning area, I take it. Uh, All right. And over here is your tree farm. Ooh, pretty. Slime tree. Yep. And I know I heard a villager. And what is His Stone Barrow sucks. with a Villager? Yeah, I built this thing originally to contain a blaze. Oh, okay. And what trade my... does he have? Um, Emeralds for sure. a sword. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it sucks. Well, considering that it's easy enough to automate the production of emeralds, that's not so sucky. Yep. 
<clears throat> now. This is my machine that cranks out soul sand. Hmm. Can you please explain how this machine that cranks out soul sand works? It's a self-powered matter generator. It makes sand and dirt. Hmm. A and soul sand. Powered matter generator. Okay, over here. All right. At the core of, of it all, we have the igneous extruder. This is feeding into this pulverizer, which turns cobblestone into gravel. Okay. That pulverizer feeds into this pulverizer, turns which turns gravel into, into sand. Gravel, got it. And then the gravel goes down below? Yep, and turns to sand. Uh -huh. And I just opened it up a bit so that it would, uh... Okay. I, I, I come in and skim a little gravel and sand off the top every now and then so that, it, uh, or so that I can sift them and whatnot. Got Anyways, it. the igneous extruder is also feeding into this crucible over the flame, making lava, which, if you'll follow me... Just a second... Okay, the... Okay, how does the crucible generate lava? It melts cobblestone. From the flame. Oh, now, oh, so, oh, I see. The igneous extruder on top is generating cobblestone to feed both the crucible and the pulverizer. Yep. And back here... And I see your chests are storing some spare sand and dust. Okay. Yes, and back here... As I head to the back... Yes. This the fluiduct extracts the lava from the crucible and uses it to power the magmatic dynamo, which powers both the pulverizers. Aha. Uh -huh. And the end result is sand, which gets sucked into these. Sucked oh, oh, I see. The I see. So you're pulling the, the uh, you're pulling the lava liquid out, and then the dynamo is is powering. So, the power, uh, the power of the cobblestone is enough to allow you to break the cobblestone into parts and generate lava. You have a you have an infinite energy m machine. <laughs> yes. yes. Negative I do. entropy. Yes, she does. <laughs> Negative entropy. <laughs> Anyways. Then I have the aqueous accumulator filling all these barrels full of water. Right. A piece of mycelium in the middle to turn them into witch water, and the sand from the end of the machine is feeding into them oh. in the top and pulling out at the bottom. Hold on a second. And the end result is soul sand, which is shoved into the quest delivery system. Okay, so one one more time. You went a little faster than I could follow. Okay. The aqueous accumulator fills yes. these barrels with sand. Because of the piece of mycelium in the center... Hold on, hold on. The, it fills up the barrels with sand, you said? Water, sorry. Oh, okay. It fills them up with water. All right. Because of the mycelium in the center... Oh, it, I didn't um, notice that. Okay. The water converts to witch water. Once it's done and converted to witch water, the uh, sand from the machine feeds into it, converts to soul sand, and then is sucked out the bottom and delivered through the quest delivery system, which is currently on soul sound. Uh -huh. Since the construction of this machine, it has produced 4,229 pieces. Oh, no, wait. Sorry, it has produced a little, probably around 3,000, or probably over 3,500. I'm not entirely sure since I went to the nether with an excavator and sped up the quest a bit. Okay, so hold on. So there's this... Oh, I see, and there is a dirt... Um... Yes, I'm um, getting to that. Okay. Now, since the, con the creation of witch water will cause mushrooms to grow spontaneously on the mycelium. Right. I set up a terrain smasher to harvest those mushrooms. Feeds into this chest, which feeds into that barrel, which composts into dirt. So, on top of everything else, it's making dirt for me, too. Okay. So, to make sure I understood that, the mycelium, the generation of witch, uh, the generation of witch water, I saw will make mushrooms, the terrain smasher will smash the mushrooms, the terrain smasher will then put those mushrooms into the chest. And from the chest to the barrel. I see. And the fact that there are mushrooms staying in the chest at the moment? Is because sometimes it makes mushrooms faster than the barrel can compost them. Ah. But it ten it, it'll catch up. Okay. All right. And on, and then at the end, there's this barrel of uh, two stacks of dirt, or 169 dirt. Okay, I see. And I can tell the difference between witch water and regular water. 
And how does the system empty the witch water out and replace it with, with... Oh, I see, I see. The witch water turns into soul sand. I just caught that on tape. Twice. Great. Okay. What's and so funny? found something incredibly hilarious. Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. So... I found... An Yes, can like an animated GIF put out by the creator of the Simply Jetpacks mod. Oh, the one with the zombie? Yes. He throws a jetpack at a zombie. The zombie takes off into the air and explodes in fireworks. What? <laughs> it's amazing. He throws a jetpack at a zombie. The zombie the picks zombie it up picks and equips it, up, puts it, it on, and then flies. <coughs> and then flies into the air, at which point the jetpack explodes in a colorful explosion of fireworks. <laughs> Dropping a potato. <laughs> <laughs> which is appropriate, since it was the tuberous jetpack. <laughs> okay. I wonder if that's a baked potato. I see. And the barrel is composting. And the hopper is catching the composted outputs. And the only thing that is coming out is, is dirt. Nothing else comes out of the composting operation. The o um, I'm asking a question. Is the only thing that you can get from composting mushrooms dirt? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Is the only thing that you can get from composting mushrooms dirt? The only thing you can get from composting anything is dirt. Oh, oh, I'm confusing composting and seeding. My apologies. Sifting, sifting, not seeding. Sifting. And here you have started your blood magic. Whoa. All right. Yes. Would you like to make a donation? <laughs> Ruin of augmented capacity. And this is your altar. Okay. And yeah, I really need to keep working on it. I'm probably going to need help. Blood ruin. The... Augmented capacity. Blood ruin. Okay. And I won't ask you to explain blood magic at the moment because I'm not even close to being ready to start it. Is this a level 2 or a level 1? This is a level 2. Okay. Level 1 is just the altar. I really should upgrade it to a tier 3 as soon as I can, but... Alright. And does Moss Stone spread on its own? No. That's what I, I thought. Had some, I had some barrels here. And during the rain, they filled up with water, and they uh, made some mossy cobble. Correct me if I'm wrong. A rain, a barrel in the rain only turns the one stone directly underneath it to moss. No, a barrel in the rain fills up with water. A barrel with water in it will spread mossy cobblestone near it. Near it, not just the one spice underneath it, but just near it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I now I know. Alright. And here, of course, is your smell tree. And you have a... You have <laughs> cobblestone feeding into a hopper, which feeds into the smell tree controller. What? Or is there something else besides cobblestone on top of this hopper? <laughs> hmm? Over here... Next to your smell tree controller... Oh, that was just something I set up for when I had something that was too much for the... for the to all stuff in the smell tree at once. Uh... What is... Okay, I have never seen Tinkerer's Steelworks before, so this second furnace, the high oven controller, and scorched drain, this is all news to me. Hi, see my armor? It's made out of steel. Yeah, I... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought you made steel by putting um, uh, iron along with gunpowder, sand, and um, something else in a blast furnace and getting it really hot 
and and cooking and oh that's right coal coal sorry coal isn't sand. that rotary craft yes it is <laughs> this isn't fucking rotary craft <laughs> well i'm sorry but that's the only steel i know <laughs> you don't know railcraft what railcraft it has steel yes but i don't use railcraft keep in mind I took a look at Railcraft a while ago, only to find that it was it looked more like for people who were interested in doing um, a model railway road simulation or a real full bled full fledged railway company type of thing, and less a simple I want to get you get a minecart from A to B. Yeah, I I, I mean. It's, it's, it's whole... also very useful for people with forestry because creosote oil can be used interchangeably with seed oil. Yes, but everything that you do in there is all about the creosote oil, it seems. Ooh, something just went into the river. Squidworth! Key, um... Yeah? I hate to tell you this, but in the early days when I used Railcraft... Yeah? I was voiding all of my creosote oil... I had no use for it. The one time that I tried using it, everything was all about the Coke engine, and it was a real pain to do you anything. You mean the Coke oven? What? Coke oven. Sorry, Coke oven. Yeah, that will turn coal into coal coke, or um, wood into charcoal for free. It's very, very, very useful. But just building any rails required huge, excessive amounts of coke for anything. Creosote. Creosote, sorry. And you would normally have stockpiled all of that creosote because you would have been using coal coke as your fuel source for a heck of a lot of things because it was incredibly potent fuel. One piece of coal coke is equal to four pieces of coal. And you get that just by sticking it in a coke oven and waiting. But Correct I mean, me if just... I'm wrong, but that seems pretty dang appealing. Oh, I'm just thinking... Okay, you, you're... First off, your farm does not have staircases to let you get from level to level. Oh, wait, there it is, ladders. <laughs> or you could always swim. On my hunger? <laughs> well, there's a huge chest of food right here. And I know you're going to steal those pumpkins. Not earned, not earned, not <laughs> earned. <laughs> and trust me, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. I'm just filling up my hunger bar. It'll go right back in. Taking advantage of a friend's hospitality. That's what you're doing. You're not cheating. You wanted me to, sh to film your base, and I am. Yes. But it takes time and food to film your base. Well, I didn't really need you to film it, just I just wanted to show it off. Same thing, I think. Okay, so. Alright, so you've got an ender generator, which takes ender pearls to make power, correct? Yep. And you have a chest that has... Oh, hey, I should check that chest. Oh, my. Where and how and what's causing... What's generating all this stuff? Walk over here. Okay, now, okay, that's my next question. You have fluid duct, item duct, and energy conduit. Over here. All right. You see that? Oh, what? What in... That. What is that? That is a sludge boiler. It takes sludge, which is generated by all the harvesters of the Omni Farm, and turns it into the various materials you saw in the chest. Okay, so it takes sludge, and I'm going to... Okay. Hey, key bounce. Yes? Watch this. <laughs> Did I have you thinking for a moment there? Well, considering that I heard you drink the potion, I knew that it was a flight potion. Aww. But yeah, this is my sludge boiler. Okay. So, an item duct, fluid duct, 
And okay, so I'm guessing that the item duct takes sludge down to the sludge boiler. Uh, the fluid duct takes sludge down to the sludge boiler. Oh, okay, I see. Fluid duct has sludge. It alternates between sludge and empty, actually. I caught it. There we go. It's changing. Okay. So it takes sludge down to the sludge boiler. The sludge <coughs> boiler sends um, energy up the hardened energy conduit. No, the sludge boiler sends items up the item duct and receives energy from the energy conduit. It needs energy to keep going. So the oh. sludge... Okay. So the sludge boiler is not an engine powered by sludge. No. It... it takes power and turns the sludge into useful items. Okay, what does it turn to sludge? Okay, I noticed that the item duct is going up, up, up. Yeah, that's from all the harvesters. Okay, this item duct feeds into the golden chest for the harvesters. Then oh. there's another item, item duct that, feed, that comes up from the sludge boiler. Oh, so the sludge boiler is depositing into the chest. Yep, and I just emptied that chest into my AE network, so if you want to see all the things that it produced, you'll have to go back and look at okay. your video. Okay, so you're... Okay, <coughs> so the... All right, oh, so oh. The, sl the sludge boiler takes energy from the energy conduit and sludge from the item duct. No, no, fluid duct. sludge from the fluid duct. So I guess my next question is, can you show me where the um, hardened energy conduit and the fl um, sludge duct get started from? How they get generated? Well, they lead into the um, harvesters. All right. The harvesters harvest these crops and deposit them into the item duct. The energy conduit brings energy from that ender, ender generator mm -hmm. and powers the planters and the harvesters. The bottom oh, three floors okay. only need harvesters because they I tested which plants would be destroyed by a harvester. And there's three fours of plants that are not destroyed by harvesters. Okay, so, so if I understand this correctly. The um, ender generator down below is powering the hardened energy conduit. And the hardened energy conduit is powering all of the machines in this farm. Yes. Okay. And the well, harvesters are generating um, items for the item duct. And who is generating the sludge? The harvesters. The harvesters generate both plants into the item duct and sludge into the fluid duct. Yes, the sludge is a byproduct. Okay. Now, the next thing is that you were saying that three floors of, um, of plants work with the harvester and three floors do not? Um, I tested extensively to find out which plant... Er, I tested a bit and found out that there were 27 plants that were not destroyed by the harvester. So the bottom three floors only have harvesters because they don't need to be they're not destroyed by it and they don't need to be replanted. The top uh -huh. four floors all have harvesters and planters. The planter replants the plant after the harvester harvests it because the harvester will, you know, destroy the plant when okay. it harvests it. And, and what I just the hell happened I to these? the second floor? So I will probably want to get that back again in a second. The hell? What? Um, my sweet potatoes haven't been giving seeds, or something. So, all right, I'll get that out in a second. Cucumbers, corn. Can coffee beans be turned into drinkable coffee yet? Yeah, but it's really weak. It's really weak? There are my sweet potato seeds. Why didn't they go? Oh my goodness, did I forget to set the item duct? What's wrong? Okay. So now we're up to the fourth floor, and these, yep. are, the, uh, these are the places where the plants are destroyed by the harvester. So... I am so on there's your... A planter what? Underneath. So there's a planter on the bottom level of the floor that replants the plants. All nine patches. Okay, where is the... Pl okay, I'm... Maybe I'm on the wrong floor, but I don't see a planter block. Look up. Oh! <laughs> and I'm sure YouTubers are laughing at me right now. <laughs> the planter for this floor is actually underneath this piece of farmland. 
It has to be placed underneath the place it's planting on. Oh. And but if you look in the GUI, it has this filter. All right. I'm oh, to... parsnip, peanut, garlic, onion, pineapple, ginger, oat, lettuce, leek. For your benefit, I am going to do this. What? This what? Is... Oh. Ah. See the colors? Yes, I do. They determine in the filter which direction each one is planted. Okay. This, it fits into my farm design absolutely perfectly. Okay. Cauliflower, celery, asparagus. Cauliflower, celery, asparagus. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is that your planter has a nine-item filter, and next to it are 16, I guess they're um, plot lot layouts, but only nine are being used. Yeah, 16. Um, in that's that's his inventory for the seeds. Yeah. Okay. I blocked off the others so it wouldn't get clogged with seeds, or so it wouldn't get clogged with carrots, basically. I see. And then, as as soon as um. Oh, so if any of these harvesters are so full that they can't hold anything, it goes down to the chest below. Yes. So when this one is, the one I'm looking at, for example, shows 16 bean seeds and 17 beet seeds. So I can expect that there are no bean seeds or beet seeds down below because they haven't filled this guy up yet. Yeah, eventually I'm probably going to have to set up a system that will void these, void the seeds for me. But that's off in the future a bit yet. All right. Okay. So... Something that I'm very curious about, a 3x3 three three patch is not really an ideal size. Is that, is, did you use that size because I, there's something about the planter that requires it to be a 3x3? Three three? No, I just like the design. Okay. And honestly, this entire place is automated and it's self-sustaining, so I don't really need it to be incredibly efficient. I've got all the time in the world. Okay, you have a spot over here that... Oh, just, never mind, it just planted. <laughs> yep, that's what the planter does. Literally caught it on camera. At least I hope I caught it on camera. <laughs> okay. And then if you come to the top level, you'll see why I consider this place self-sustaining. Um, Jump. You need one more ladder. Okay, so what's happening here on the... So you have ender lilies. Yep. To supply your um, your um, end farm. Oh, ow, oh! Yeah, and what's powering this place? <laughs> ender, ender pearls. Exactly. I wonder if these have generated any extra seeds. Nope, not yet. Oh, and I, yeah. seemed, I think I just caught a soul sand harvest a second ago. Ah, yeah, another wart. Hold on, hold on. Tile.pumpkinstem.name. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It should replant this any minute now. Tile.pumpkinstem. Tile.pumpkinstem. Sweet. So my question to you is... When it's planting... How does it know not to mix things up? For example, I'm looking at two empty spots in the sweet potato section. Oh, there it goes. How does it know to put sweet potatoes in those spots and not something else? That filter I showed you. Don't you remember? You saw the colors on the top of the machine? Yes. That indicates which direction it's going to plant those in. Ah. Is the planter only able to deal with nine directions, basically? I or think, nine yeah. plots. Nine directions. I don't know. I just found that this worked, and I decided to stick with it. I don't know how big I can make it. All right. Hmm. Okay. All right. So. Ender pearls power everything, and this thing provides you with ender pearls. 
And if yep. anything, you probably need to make more ender lily plants than that, right? What do you mean? Are these nine ender lilies, given how slowly they grow, enough? Yeah. Um, keep out... Yes? I kind of hate to say this on camera, but the ender generator is just a bit overpowered. One ender pearl will keep that baby running for 20 minutes. So one ender pearl will run it for a day. You have nine, so you make... No, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Key bounce, one, or at least it's overpowered for this farm. It's way more than it needs. One ender pearl will keep that thing running, and this farm, or for, or will keep it running for 20 minutes, and this farm does not burn through enough energy to exhaust that. So af it'll fill up its internal battery, mm -hmm. and after the ender pearl is fully used up, it'll take it another 20 minutes or so to you to burn through the internal battery of the ender or of the uh, generator. Okay. Here's what I'm noticing. It takes... If I added a few, if I added a few extra batteries, I could probably run this thing for like two hours off a single Ender Pearl. Okay. Here's what I'm noticing. You, each Ender Lily takes about one week to make an Ender Pearl. So in one week, you generate nine pearls. And one in-game week. Yes, That's one in-game week. Hours. It, what, well, one in-game week is seven times twenty minutes. In 7 times 20 24 minutes... 24 minutes. What? Isn't it 24 minutes? No, it's 20 minutes for a Minecraft day. I in thought it was 24. 20. In 7 times 20 minutes, you consume 7 pearls and generate 9. So it is already um, self-sufficient, even before you take into account the fact that the generator is overpowered and has a buffer. Yeah, I'm getting surplus ender pearls from this. Yes, you are. Are you getting ex are you getting any spare ender lilies? Are, um, I, do they have a chance of, of making extras? They have a chance of making extra seeds, but I haven't gotten any from that yet. Oh. <clears throat> Not so, from auto farming them anyway. I got a couple from when I still had a manual farm. Ah. Uh, <coughs> okay. <coughs> and do you have um is there something wrong with your throat? Nah, maybe a little. Oh, I thought maybe you were trying to tell me something or point something out to me that I was overlooking. 